Um, first of all, thank you to Tate, Ishara, and Al Circle for organizing this event and for their invitation. Um, I am I'm a visual artist based in Tehran, and today I'm going to be speaking about um, living and working, living in the city and, and working about the city. Um, so this photo looking from north towards south of Tehran was taken from the summit of Darabad mountain. I lived at the hillside of this mountain at an altitude of 1,743 meters for 15 years and actually up to two weeks ago. For the fa uh, past 15 years, I have been a keen observer of Tehran and have explored various aspects of the city through my work. Uh, my practice is focused on everyday life and its relation to its social, political, and economic context. Um, the city, and in my case Tehran, is not only the backdrop uh, of these relations, but it also plays a role in, sh in their shaping. Uh, in the process of analyzing the everyday in this context, I have consequently captured the changes of the city, and sometimes these changes have become uh, the main subject of my projects. Um, today I'm going to share with you five projects dating from 2006 to 2017, not in that order. Um, the image you see here shows you a city uh, spreading um, infinitely. While Tehran at a first glance might seem like a city in a frenzy of construction, for most buildings that are being erected in a city, one or more have been eradicated. Um, I like to start with a two minute of a six minute video called Fragment One um, to show you how this destruction is done. And this goes on and on until the um, building is um, sort of disappears. Uh, so fragment one is part of a series called Demolishing Buildings Buying Waste, uh, which is what is written on the wall in this image. This phrase accompanied by various phone numbers sprayed hastily over and over on the walls of low-rise buildings in the city is a sign of a force that has been transforming Tehran in the past decade. The fast pace of demolition, which on average takes two weeks um, for a 200 square um, two-story building, quickly erases the physical features of the city, while the gradual process of building gets our eyes slowly used to the new spatial forms. And by the time a building is finished, one can no longer remember what it was like before it existed. This is how Tehran has been harshly but methodically changing. For this project, I documented in film and photographs a complete process of demolition of a 30-year-old uh, residential building. In Iran, the whole process of demolition is usually done manually. 
and the first hand witnessing of turning a livable space into piles of dust and rubble by the sheer force of hand and with the help of sledgehammers in a course of 16 days was a truly moving experience. So fragment one reflects on um, some of this experience while documenting the process of demolition. Uh, but to come back to the main question of the project, which was whether the city is under construction or in destruction, I attempted to capture a moment in a cycle uh, which this direction was, was unclear. Uh, in order to do so, I used the tools of, um, of architecture, drawing in 3D, uh, the demolished building in as much detail as possible based on what was revealed through the process of demolition. Um, so I, I sort of did what you can um, call rever reverse engineering. Uh, I then used um, this model to simulate um, a virtual demolition. And then going in, um, into more detail, um, I did the same thing for individual units. Uh, the building was made from redrawing them in their standard, uh, standard sizes and breaking them uh, up by applying virtual force and gravity. Uh, this, form uh, this process turned uh, the standard units of construction into standard units of destruction. Um, and by the rep uh, reproduction and multiplication, I then um, created piles of rubble that could be put back together and, re and reassembled. Um, they, like the city, uh, fell into an endless, endless cycle of uh, destruction construction. Uh, so what is being built instead um, these days in Tehran? Um, Tehran's architecture is an amalgam of styles and materials, most of which have no ties to the geographical setting of the city or the traditional and rich um, architectural heritage of Iran. This incongruous architecture, um, though can be categorized easily um, based on the use of its material, um, like the era of aluminium and reflective glass, the three centimeter brick or marble, uh, marble slab facades. Um, these drastic shifts in style and the rapid development of the city, however, um, can be traced back to various social um, changes and economic trends. So over the past 10 years, what is known as classical or Roman facade um, with elements such as pillars, arcs, or even domes, um, came to be the contemporary standard of taste and a symbol of wealth and affluence. As Tehran was becoming more like its own twisted version of ancient Rome, I became interested in the relationship between economic trends and architectural trends. Um, this pervading architectural style in Tehran happened at the same time as the economic currents in Iran changed due to the tightening of the international sanctions and the monopolization of the markets. So to draw a parallel between architecture and economy, I chose pillars um, as the architectural element to focus on, um, since pil pillars have historically symbolized power and stability. So I focus on also, I focus on the 12 um, articles from Chapter 4 of the Iranian Constitution, um, Economy and Financial Affairs, as the base for regulating economy. Um, so combining um, the two, I created my own set of pillar heads and capitals. Each piece takes its form from the text of one of the articles. Um, I arranged them uh, typographically in a way that all the words are connected together and once revolved, um, the text becomes a three-dimensional, uh, three, becomes three-dimensional and resembles uh, a pillar uh, capital or a pillar head. So this shows you a process of, of their making. And um, so this is um, the image on the right. Um, is what art, Article 47, for example, looks like. But apart from the three-dimensional transformation of the city, there's um, been things happening in um, 
in the two dimensions. The so surfaces of the buildings are, have been used as white canvases ever since the revolution of 1979, and especially after the Iran-Iraq war. They have been used by the municipality for painting murals and writing calligraphic slogans. These murals have been changing every few years, projecting the socio-political situation of their time, registering the changes through eight years of war, onto the era of economic and industrial development, to the area of cultural and social openness, and finally to the Iran of today. Around 2011, the municipality of Tehran slowly changed the face of the city yet another time, uh, replacing the older murals with new colorful imagery of nature, Iranian countryside, and traditional architecture. As the city was losing more and more of its open spaces, murals of gardens with blue skies, old Iranian architecture, uh, with their nostalgic air, created illusions of um, openness. So ideals, ideal scenes from the countryside or customs of the past covered our modern and actual urban life, projecting a supposedly desired onto the undesired. So walking in Tehran, what one could find a Kashan-style house with a courtyard painted on the side of a three-story building from the 80s or a Yaz-style architecture depicted on the side of a newly built apartment complex uh, or rows or rows of painted adobe villages on the side of uh, the highway. Uh, most of these large-scale paintings also played with uh, perspective and the already existing architectural elements of the buildings onto which they were painted on, suggesting a merging of the real and the unreal architecture. So this is an example of, um, of uh, what uh, you can see the pillars um, in the real uh, building are extended to the painting. So the project fabrication um, takes these murals and the buildings that they're painted on as its subjects turning them into miniature monuments. Um, the project actualizes and gives some form of reality uh, to the painted spaces by making the two-dimensional, three-dimensional. Both buildings, the actual and the fictional, are made into a merged architectural model. The real and the unreal are given the same amount of importance and the same circumstances to fight for existence. Um, the process of merging um, of the two creates opportunities uh, for such dis decisions as to how each building occupies the space of the other, whilst interrupting the independence, values, and functions um, of the other building. Um, so while each era has produced its own specific architecture reflecting the ethics of its ruling, Power, this project attempts to capture the ephemeral nature of these murals and frees them to become the representative of uh, their own era. Now, uh, moving to another set of walls, um, the construction and demolition that uh, was described before has not left any neighborhood unaffected um, in the city and it has yet another face. Um, every so often, one layer of, an, of the knockdown buildings uh, stand remaining, um, a layer that is stuck to the adjacent building. Um, this thin wall often bears the traces of furniture or pictures hung on the wall, some niches and ledges or tiles or sockets that indicate the original functionality of the space. What were once bedrooms, bathrooms, kitchen, and family rooms um, are stripped bare of their protecting walls to put on display the intimate spaces of their inhabited, inhabitants' inner lives. Um, containing the last bit of memory of a lived space, um, if, the, if these temporary uh, walls are somehow preserved, um, the attached fragments of the memory will perhaps allow for the recollection and the recovering of the entity of the lost house. Um, and this is what I was trying to do in a project membrane, uh, which you will see um, the process of its making. 
Um, I set out to conserve a layer from one of these standing walls um, of a two-story building, employing um, technology such as 3D scanning. Um, the, the, document, the, the wall was documented point by, by point and recreated to a surface and uh, then made into a series of styrofoam molds. Um, the surface of the wall was then recreated um, bit by bit from paper paste as a thin layer. Um, the, the, skin w this, the skin that was um, created by the surface was then peeled off, um, preserving the traces of life um, that, w that had taken place in the original house. So this is what uh, the final work was like. And finally, I would like to end with the first work I made when I returned to Iran after like about 15 years ago. The video living room, um, uh, which you will see a two minute uh, snippet from, was made in 2006 and is based on one of my first impressions um, after some years of being away from Tehran. Uh, upon my arrival, I, ma I had made a note about the layer of grey dust that had infiltrated all objects and surfaces around me. And when I moved my parents, uh, helped my parents move from their apartment, um, which I had grown up uh, in, a few months later, um, the removed furniture revo revealed their imprints created by the same dust. Uh, Tehran's air pollution had made a record uh, containing both the memory of the space and the passing of the time. And I leave you to watch a bit of living room. <laughs>